Hey everyone. Hey, hey, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's. We are super excited to have you here tonight with us. We are. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at the Curvy Square book. Mm -hmm. Now this is kind of piggybacking off of what we looked at last week where we did that uh, the mini, mini kit. kit and mm -hmm. we kind of morphed the designs to fit into this curvy square design. Yep. And we got a lot of questions and comments saying we'd love to see that morph, but we'd also like to see more designs that are meant for yeah. this particular design. And we just happen to have a book that works for that. And mm -hmm. if you don't have, like we have a sample that we're gonna work on that already has it in there, like mm -hmm. pieced in there. But if you don't have a piece, we also have the stencil that you can use with it, right? Correct. It has three different sizes of the curvy square that go along with the book that will go along with what we're doing in a few minutes. Awesome. Well, let's head over to the machine and let's get quilting. All right. Now that we're over here at the machine, we're going to take the book. This is the curvy square book that we're talking about. It also has the stencils that you could use that um, with the designs in the book. We have a set on our website if you want all the, the whole set together. But what I'm going to show you today um, is using the 1959 stencil. So I'm actually going to go to page five. And I thought this as an inspiration and I'm like, you know what? I actually think I want to do like teardrop um, design. Isn't that what it's called? The teardrop yeah, design? Yeah, teardrop design, yeah. Design in it instead of the leaves um, because it's fun to have the inspiration, but then you can do whatever you want with it's it. It's the best part of the book. Yeah, it's just, it's just got so many things. different designs and things to choose from. Right. So I'm going to take that. And because we already have the curvy square inside this pieced quilt, um, I'm going to not use this template that has all the different sizes. I'm one just going to go straight. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to cut you off. One of the benefits of that stencil is if you are working with a pieced square and you want to give it that curvy square effect, you can pounce the powder into your piece block and then you have that nice uh, piece to follow. Or if you're creating a whole cloth, it's great to have something like this so you have the, that uh, size that you need. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Um, and then, so I'm going to also now take the basic eight which is the 1959, and I'm gonna flip it over so I can get my outline here so I can do that little square. Remember, you always wanna line it up. Good, and then you wanna make sure you have the label down. And I'll line up to the best that I can on that. It's not perfect, but then I'm just gonna pounce right here, get my little markings. Then I'm actually gonna take my chalk pencil. I love these chalk pencils. If you don't have the ultimate marking pencil, you gotta get it, it's super nice and fun. And it's an iron off one too, so. So now I'm gonna draw the design first, cause you know, I'm, just, I'm still a really a beginner, even though I've been doing this for a long time in the industry, I don't get to get on the machine that much. So I'm gonna take the chalk pencil and to make my little teardrop here, and I'm gonna make a bigger teardrop to go up and make a small one here. Then I'm gonna take and do another small one then I'm following the line and going all the way to the curve, bringing it back down. Then I need to stay in this next line right here and keep going. Up, a little curve down. And I like to draw mine all the way out just so I can keep myself on, on task, right? Because, you know, I will get off task. And there we go. And if I wanted to, I could actually go back in afterwards and echo. But we're going to start off with this first and see how it looks. I love it. All righty. So now we're going to take the machine, bring it down. I'm going to start over here on this side. Pull up my thread. And then I'm going to just quilt away. Up and over. I'm just going to do a small, another small. Just, oh, <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. So that's a, you know, that's okay. It shows that you can make mistakes. I can go in after the fact and I can just <laughs> pick that out. He's just laughing at me so hard. <laughs> It's okay. It's a design tool. You're going to go in and echo it anyway. Yeah, that's it's true. It's fine. It's all good. It just shows that I think it's we fine. can make it mistakes. Happens. It's all good. 
in the grand scheme of things, you wouldn't be quilting this in bright pink thread anyway. That's so true. So no one would see it. That's it's very fine. true. That's very true. Everything's fine. So now what I could go in and I could actually just play and do an inside echo too to take care of that. Or, or a do spiral. like a spiral. Oh yeah, do a spiral. Okay. She's giving me the look of, Corey, I think you need to come show me what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what I mean by spiral is just come in and give this just a nice little oh, okay, movement. And then on the way out, catch that little quote unquote mistake that you said that you had right there. Uh -huh. And now it looks like it's part of the design. Ah, there you go. Looks like it was meant to be there. All right, and then so now I think I will echo it. I'm okay. gonna cut off my extra because that'll drive me crazy. And then I'm gonna go and do an outside echo. Sure. Right? Okay. I love it. I like the double texture on it too. Well, it takes away the mistakes. <laughs> I think it looks great. I think it looks good. I love it. Alrighty, uh, okay. Corey, let's, what do we do next? I think we're gonna move over to the next square and I'm gonna do something a little bit more intricate. All right, sounds good. Okay, so I know I just thought I was gonna do something a little bit more intricate, but I think I changed my mind, is that okay? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I like changing my mind, that's what I do. So in this section, we get a lot of requests for ruler work. Okay. and kind of taking it outside the box. And so I have this design right here, and this is on page 17. And this is something very simple, but it could be great for a modern quilt like this if you're working on these, and it's gonna be something super fast that we can use with a ruler. No, that's a really good idea. Okay. I mean, it shows a little bit of ruler work too. Love it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start by pouncing on my lines, because I still need that to help me figure out exactly where I need to be when I'm doing my ruler work. Love so let me give outlines. myself a little hit. I'll pounce this on, remove my stencil, and there's my lines. Nothing too crazy that you need with it. You don't really need a heavy pounce by any means. Um, we also get questions on if the uh, pounce bounces away. Sometimes it can. If you do um, have a heavy pounce, you can just spritz a little water on that little best press and it'll hold it uh, while you're working for what you need. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna find my starting point. So I'm gonna start here at the top section and I can give myself kind of an S here so I can see where I need to start. And then I'm gonna begin to create the um, arrows that I want to travel with. So I wanna start from here and I'm gonna gum down to this point right here so I can kind of give myself just a line here. And I'm gonna give myself an arrow and an arrow. And then I wanna travel from that point over here to my section up here. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a draw line here. And again, this is just a visual for me to follow. That way I can see exactly what I'm doing as I'm going. So once I get to my point over here. Now I'm gonna travel up to this one. This is kinda, it starts to be kinda fun here when you're doing this. And I'm up to this point now. I love drawing out the arrow so I can see exactly where I'm headed. So I'm gonna do those first three and then we're gonna draw out the next ones. That way we can all follow along together with each other. I have my uh, 12 by four ruler with grip dots on the back. And I've got my ruler base on the machine. I'm gonna start up here at the left, top, not the left, at the top. And I'm gonna pull up my thread. I'm gonna do a couple of tie offs here. That way my thread's locked. And then whenever you're doing your ruler work, you wanna make sure you're starting and stopping with your needle in the down position, which is what I've got. And then I've got my ruler right here against my ruler foot. And we're gonna start our travel process. So I've got this on, we're going. We're gonna get to our point. You can pause your machine, needle down, and then we're gonna turn our ruler to go the opposite direction. So we're going over here to that left corner. Hold that nice and steady. Slowly travel over, and you get to your point. 
you'll pause and then rotate your ruler to go this direction. So we're headed over here to the right, kind of getting that proper angle. Going over. And we're point to there. Okay, so we started here. We came to this point of our stencil, went over and back over. So now we're gonna keep drawing out our design as we're going. So from here, we're gonna drop down to this section. So I'm just gonna give myself a line from the foot because the foot's in the way and I don't wanna pull up the needle. So we're gonna draw down to here, give yourself an arrow. And then once you get down to that section, you're gonna travel up to this point. So from here, we're gonna go up to that point. From this point, we are gonna travel over to this side. Over, over, over. You can see how this becomes to be a very fast design once you get the movement of it. So those are the next three lines that we're gonna do. So I'll hold my ruler in place where I need it to be. Start up my machine, travel down to my point, pause my machine, rotate my ruler, To my point, pause, rotate my ruler. We're gonna go there, yeah, I like that. And pause, so that That's was our good. next three. I know, it's turning out really, really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we get to finish up this design. So, from this point right here, we're going to travel over, oh, not a curved line, to that point there. Give ourselves some arrows and then the finish off line the one that we have left is to travel from up or from the bottom here to the top nice just like that so we're going to put this on right here we're going to start our machine up go over to our point pause those grip dots we'll, really do help don't they they make a it's a game changer they make a huge difference and then we're going to travel up And stop. Nice. And that's what we have. That looks really good. It's super duper cute. I absolutely love it. It just gives a little bit of different differentiation to it. Something enough just to tack it down. You could go in and fill in other things in here if you want. If you want to do a closer stitch line, you could do that as well. Or you could just stop wherever you're at. I like it the way it is. I think it would be great to fill up this little section. So on the on the ovals on the outside, I know we're not stitching that out, but what would you what would it be an idea? If you're doing a lot of straight line work in the center section, I personally would do something a little bit less. I would have that straight line look, but maybe a curvature instead of a point. Like so something candy? quick, I would probably do ribbon candy out here. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Is that your way of telling me you want me to do ribbon At candy At least quickly? one for them. Oh, okay, <laughs> just one quickly. All right, just for the people. All right. So I would start here, and then I would just begin my ribbon candy process. Again, you're keeping these fit relatively straight, but you have a curvature at the end of it as opposed to a straight point. That helps break up those straight lines. Just like that. Love it that point so you could do that all the way around and that would solidify that block yeah love it so i had an absolute blast out there yeah that was fun yeah that was super fun and i love the using the book for the ideas but how i changed mine up and but then you were able to find one right in the book because it had all the perfect lines and arrows he was talking about so you definitely want the book um i think it was also pretty fun too. What? oh sorry ma'am <laughs> I think it was also really cool to see that even as mom always says that she is a quote unquote beginner. I am very much a beginner. A 21, a 21 year beginner. 21 year beginner. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. But you saw that she was able to overcome some of those uh ohs that happen and you just kind of throw in a different design to kind of hide it away because it can. Yeah. We always try to tell you there's no rules in quilting because there really aren't. It's nope. depending on whatever you want it to be. It's a design choice. It definitely is. Or, and if you, or if you're like really, really concerned about that, 
it's okay to stop and then pick it out, mm -hmm. right? You gotta do reverse quilting and it, it's never as fast <laughs> as the quilting is. But either way, it works out. <laughs> it does, so. totally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, looking at those stencils, again, we took a look at the Curvy Square book tonight, and then there's also the matching Basic 8 that you can use that we did, or if you're wanting to have a Curvy Square and one that isn't already curvy, we have that stencil below. Everything yeah. is linked below in the description as well, and you can yep. find them on our website, lindas.com. We'll see you next time here at After Hours. Bye. Bye.